why the narcissist likes you to cry. Crying is an extensive human emotion. Usually it's associated with hurt and pain, but it also can be associated with elation. I do not cry. I cry very little as a child. It was always the order that there were to be no tears. The big boys don't cry. And I knew that if I started to do so, the punishment for crying would be even worse than the one that I was already receiving. And therefore the tears never emerged. But this isn't about the behaviours of the narcissist with regard to tears. Certain narcissists, of course, engage in a lot of crying, huge pity plays, sympathy, symphonies. Invariably, the behaviour of the middle mid-range type B. Certain narcissists never cry. The greaters, the ultra. Whatever their manifestation, however, where a narcissist does cry, understand it is not for the reasons that you cry, because it is not compounded or based upon emotional empathy. Where a narcissist does cry, it is just another form of manipulation. But that is an explanation for another video. This is all about your tears and why we like you to cry. Your tears where, of course, importantly, they are occasioned by us. Signal, control, and provide us with fuel. As an aside, it's worthwhile mentioning that we cannot stand it if you are crying because of something else. If you are crying because your cat got run over, we don't care. If you are crying because your souffle didn't emerge from the oven correctly, we do not care. If you are crying because your aunt has just died, we do not care. If you are crying because your sister has just got engaged and you are delighted, we do not care. If you are crying because your football team has finally won the title after years and years of trying and you are ecstatic and elated, we do not care. Those tears were not caused by us, and those tears are redundant. Your tears of happiness have been generated by somebody else, and therefore they serve no purpose at all for us. Get rid of them. Even worse, if you're crying because you're hurt, upset, or in pain, there comes with it the expectation from you that somehow we will alleviate them, and that amounts to an imposition upon us and a threat to our control. Your burdening us with your tears caused by something else is abhorrent. Not only are you not giving us any fuel, but you are implicitly saying, help me. We are not designed to help you unless it serves our purposes. Of course, in such situations, dependent upon where you are in the narcissistic dynamic, the narcissist will help you. The narcissist will provide you with a degree of comfort. The narcissist will provide you with a degree of support. But that's not because it's genuine. Because, as you know, we have no emotional empathy. No. The reason that that support, that comfort, the there, there, everything will be all right, is said to you is just a manipulation. False compassion. False support. Designed to shift your focus of tears away from the fact that you've just cut your hand and so that you are appreciative of the false support that the narcissist, invariably mid-range, will be providing to you. Thank you, you say. Immediately, the fuel has now started to flow from you, because it is our action, by way of the provision of this supposed support, that has occasioned you to thank us. Where you are upset about something else, where you've lost your job, been hurt, had somebody else shout at you, then your tears are a complete waste of fuel. Sometimes it provides an opportunity for certain narcissists to exhibit cognitive empathy, mid-range or greater, to jump in and utilise the situation to our advantage, 
but only if it benefits us with regard to the prime aims. In other instances, particularly with a lesser narcissist, you would be met with a shrug of what's wrong, as they don't register what the problem is. And a mid-ranger or greater will only assist if it serves our purposes. If our narcissism determines that there is no threat to control, or that we are better off asserting control by withdrawal, then we will do so. And you will be left there, on your knees, crying your eyes out, bemoaning the fact that you have suffered some ill occasioned by somebody else, and thus the narcissist makes him or herself scarce. But what about when your tears are occasioned by us? Why do we like that so much? Well, first of all, let's deal with your tears of happiness. If we cause those, that's positive fuel, and that's all well and good. Your facial expression, the tears leaking from your eyes, that half smile, or great big beam, the words associated with it all, they all combine together to provide us with a huge amount of fuel in that moment. And, should you be the intimate partner primary source, the potency is very high. If you're the intimate partner secondary source, the potency remains high, ranked behind that of the intimate partner primary source. Accordingly, your tears of happiness are very useful to us, and therefore we in effect like them. Why? They signal to us that you're under our control. So if we have said something particularly romantic to you and produced with a flourish and magnificent bouquet of flowers, as we have proposed to you, then your tears of elation tell us very much that you're under control and provide us with a massive dollop of fuel in that moment. All is well in the world of the narcissist. And thus the fuel that you provide us make us feel powerful, calms and quashes the nagging emptiness that lurks within. And the response of the narcissist is one of obvious and apparent delight. Although, of course, that is just what the narcissist mimics by way of response. Inside, it's the fuel that matters, that sense of power that's surging, occasioned by your tears of happiness. It gets even better for us, though, when it is tears of pain, hurt and frustration. This is negative fuel, and negative fuel is more potent than positive fuel. Why? Well, you can read about this in greater detail in my excellent book, Fuel, but the simple reason is this. It's comparatively easy to draw positive fuel from someone. Admiration, happiness, delight, praise, joy. It's harder to draw hurt from someone, especially from somebody that is expecting us to treat them well. And therefore, by occasioning your tears of hurt, your tears of pain, your tears of frustration, the potency is increased because this signifies real power over you. To be able to make the person that we apparently love cry because of our harsh words towards them is powerful. To bring you to your knees in frustration, sobbing, as a consequence of our intransigence and pig-headed behaviour, is powerful. Your tears, when generated by us, are fuel. They are negative fuel when they are tears of pain, hurt, injury or frustration. In such circumstances, when the tears begin to flow, that fuel tap is turned wide open and if it is the intimate partner primary source we receive the very potent extremely potent negative fuel from the intimate partner primary source if we make the former intimate partner primary source upset through injury hurt nastiness malign hoovering it's even more potent and therefore we receive extremely high potent fuel that's negative, thus it's at the top of the tree, coming in large amounts because we're receiving it proximate from you and over the sustained duration by which you cry. It is a fuel fest for us. And as this fuel pours from you by way of your tears of anguish, hurt and pain, the power surges within us. It surges to such an extent 
that certain narcissists cause the outward manifestation in particular ways which might further alarm you. Some will just continue to look at you, stony-faced, yet within the power surges. Others will actually smile at you, adding to your distress and alarm, because it appears that we are reveling in your pain. Where this happens with the lesser or mid-range narcissist, it isn't a conscious reveling in your pain, but rather the product of the fuel causing the narcissist's response, in a sense, to malfunction. In order to fit in, the response shouldn't be one of smiling at you whilst you cry. But it cannot be helped, because the surge of power caused by this fuel is so great, it catches out the narcissism in a way, and causes it to produce a response which is a delight. So in the same way that we might show delight as a consequence of your tears of joy, your tears of pain also produce this apparent delight. It ought not to. The narcissism is misfired, but it cannot help itself by causing that to appear because the fuel is so powerful. It's a little bit like a drug addict trying to keep completely still as they inject themselves with heroin, trying to stop the, the sigh of, oh my God, as they feel that surging orgasmic ecstasy rising within them, trying to prevent themselves from their eyes rolling back, tears forming in their eyes as the emotion sweeps over them. So similarly for the narcissist, where we receive this extremely potent negative fuel from you, from an extremely potent source, such as the former intimate partner primary source, or the current intimate partner primary source, or even an intimate partner of a secondary source, then the surge that is caused can result in the narcissist smiling or grinning at you, which only adds to your confusion and pain. Indeed, it actually works in our favour, because this compounds your misery and you lash out further, sobbing harder, as the person that is meant to support you stands there smiling at you. In some instances, it can even create arousal, so that the narcissist becomes sexually aroused as a consequence of this massive provision of fuel, and therefore, the male narcissist sustains an erection, the female narcissist becomes wet. And this is occasioned again by the narcissism manifesting a response to this surge of fuel. Accordingly, your tears are very important to us because they signal to us that we have control over you, so long as they are accompanied by appropriate actions that aren't challenging. So, for instance, if you are attacking us whilst crying, saying, why have you done this to me, you monster? That's challenge fuel. The fuel is fantastic, but you're challenging us, and we still have to respond in a particular way through one of the three assertions of control to get that control over you. But if you are just there, sat on the bed, collapsed, sobbing, as a consequence of the harsh words that we directed your way, this is pure negative fuel. You're signalling control to us and giving us lots of delicious, potent fuel. If you're crying through elation because of a kind gesture that we have done, some brilliant news that we have conveyed to you as a consequence of what we have done, then similarly, you're providing us with pure positive fuel. You're signalling control and giving us lots of fuel. Tears are very important. They signal control and provide us with fuel. And in particular, that negative fuel that arises from your pain, your tears of pain, your tears of hurt, your tears of injury, your tears of anguish, are very much liked by us wanted and needed. I am H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.